The chair of the Senate Capital Investment Committee and Majority Leader, David Senjum, joins me to talk a little bit about this deed grant process. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Good to be here, Julie. Senator, arguably the biggest story to come from this mm -hmm. would be the new stadium for the St. Paul Saints, which sure. you know they're saying is going to spark a revitalization effort uh -huh. in Lower Town for St. Paul. Now, you questioned the selection in your press release. Why, in your opinion, does this project miss the mark? And let's talk a little bit about all of the projects. Well, I'm not going to suggest, you know, suggest it was a bad project. Uh, it does mean a lot to, to downtown St. Paul. I just don't think that it, it has, if you will, the economic vitality that that uh, other projects may have. Uh, in, in my case, and not to sound too parochial, uh, uh, a three or four month baseball stadium versus a, a more active facility that uh, does conventions in a, in a high powered way all year long. I think, you know, you can just think about that a little bit. I think, you know, the whole emphasis of the program was economic development, and uh, uh, I just don't think that uh, those two compare very well. And we'll go a little bit more into those projects in just a moment, but as chair of the Senate Capital Investment Committee, kind of discuss for our, the sake of our viewers how this deed process, sure. this grant process sure. even came into, yeah. into uh, reality. Well, we were, we were working, of course, on our bill. The House was working on, on their bill. Uh, we entertained a bill which had a number of local projects uh, in it. Uh, they had a bill also which had some local project in it, a much smaller bill. At that point, uh, uh, but their bill did not contain any, any civic centers at all. So at that point, uh, we were sort of at an impasse in this thing, and, and we really got to start to question ourselves about how we deal with local projects, and, and how do we make this thing fair, how do we kind of avoid earmarks, and, and what we decided to do was try to take the politics out of this thing and frankly put together a set of criteria based on economic development principles and, uh, and allocate some money. And not unlike what we do for sewer and water projects or even road and bridge projects in area transportation, could we possibly come up with a, a program that would allow for then local projects to be bonded for based on merit and based on economic development virtues? And that was that was the essence of the program, and we put uh, in the end forty-seven and a half million dollars to try to do that. So then it's a matter of whether or not it, you know it was successful. You know, the governor stated in the news conference when he announced these projects, his quote: "When given lemons, you make lemonade." So first, do you think the concept of allowing these grant dollars to be distributed is a lemon, and do you think the projects reflect lemonade? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think you know. Let's let's just think about this a little bit. Uh, we live in a very political world. You know, if uh, if any given senator or, for that matter, House member has a project, it's obviously the best project in the world. And so you get all these projects, and obviously you've got limited resources. How how does how does the Senate or the House, in a, in a in a way that's balanced and and as devoid as politics as as can be, how how do we make those decisions? And it's very difficult. I will tell you that. And and by and large, it falls down to who's a majority party and and you know, all the earmarking and, and all of that thing. We tried to take that, that out of the, of the process and, and base it on merit. So uh, I think that the process is worthy and, and we shouldn't give up on it right away. I think we ought to just stay the course and, and think about this a little bit more. Maybe we have to tweak the criteria, but uh, I think that it uh, is something that uh, if in, if in fact adopted would be healthy. We don't argue about where sewer and water projects go. Uh, deed does them. Uh, and we don't argue about where road and bridge projects go. Uh, Department of Transportation does them. We allocate the money and give the agency then the wherewithal to make those decisions. And you talked a little bit about the scoring process and pro you know, projects in general. Mm -hmm. Now the governor did include light rail in the final list. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's appropriate, in your opinion, for the state's chief exec executive to step in and include a project that he deems appropriate, that maybe didn't ha score quite as high with the deed? Well, that, and that's the kind of the funny part about how this worked out. Uh, there were a couple of projects there. I think uh, the Luth parking lot and the uh, light rail, which did, in his own scoring, come in quite low, and yet nonetheless he included it. So, so it was obvious to me that you know the maybe the criteria didn't mean much to the process and and maybe even his own scoring in the end didn't mean much to the process and uh, for whatever reason he selected what he he did and and I guess we live with that at this point so that simply says to me if this is a good process maybe it maybe it needs to be tweaked a little bit maybe we just need to put a little bit more restrictions in terms of the uh, latitude of of the uh, of deed or the governor whoever that might be 
into this process and try to make it work better. Civic centers, as you mentioned, did not get included in the final bill. So are you going to try again in the next bonding session? Well, I'm, there's no question. I don't think, uh, in my mind at least, uh, we'll have the Mankato Civic Center, the, the St. Cloud one will come back, the Rochester one will come back, possibly even another one, I don't know. But uh, uh, they'll be there. I don't think there's any question about it, and we'll just have to see if we can make it work. Senator, I want to look ahead a little bit here. Traditionally, these bonding bills have been a, just a compilation of rural projects, urban projects, you know, well represented throughout the state. As you mentioned, there was real discussion about what is what should be included in a bonding project and what shouldn't be. Do you think that tradition is going maybe to the wayside and that bonding bills will reflect a different philosophy moving forward? Uh, quite possibly. Uh, I drive down the road wondering about this and we have a lot of state needs, for instance. Uh, I'm not suggesting at all right now that we move away from funding local projects, but uh, when we do that, you know, let's say we take $100 million out of a bill and put it towards local projects, knowing full well ourselves that we have roofs that need repairing, we have all kinds of state facilities that are standing by then or standing aside as we uh, do local projects. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily easy to put this in statute in terms of how you do it, but I think, I think more and more we'll be looking at state assets because we just have to. Uh, we have crumbling infrastructure all over. Okay, Senator Dave Senjum, thanks so much for joining us today. As always, we appreciate your time. Hey, thank you, Julie.